Okay, welcome back. Before we start 5.4, let's do some review. You are investigating the cause of an outbreak of food poisoning. The culprit contains peptidoglycan and lipopolysaccharide, LPS. Which of the following organisms could be the cause? Could it be Staphylococcus aureus, a gram-positive bacterium? E. coli, a gram-negative bacterium? Aspergillus fumigatus, which is a fungi? Or D, any of the organisms above could be the cause? Go ahead and pause the video, think about that one. Okay, so the key here is first peptidoglycan. That's unique to bacteria, so that rules out the fungi. And then the lipopolysaccharide, that's going to differentiate between these two. Remember that the gram-negative bacteria had that lipopolysaccharide, that LPS. That's what causes them when they get destroyed to release that as a toxin and can cause toxic shock. So the answer would be B, E. coli, a gram-negative bacteria. Which of the following is characteristic of a gram-positive cell wall? A, waxy due to the presence of mycolic acid. B, outer membrane with lipopolysaccharide. C, thick with several layers of peptidoglycan. Or D, periplasmic space between membrane and peptidoglycan. Go ahead and pause the video. Think about this one. Okay, the answer would be C, thick with several layers of peptidoglycan. That is most characteristic of the gram-positive cell wall. It only has one membrane, so there's no periplasm. Uh, LPS is in gram-negatives, and mycolic acid was in other gram-variable things like the mycobacterium. So gram-positive, thick peptidoglycan wall. All right, in 5.4, we're going to talk about the nucleoid, the kind of area where the DNA is organized, and then we'll talk about bacterial cell division, um, a little bit about how DNA replication occurs, and then the cell growth and division that accompanies that. Okay, so we said that bacteria have a single circular chromosome of DNA, and this is a long piece of DNA. It's arranged in a circle, but... There are what we call DNA binding proteins. These are proteins that kind of help wind up and package up the DNA in there to keep it organized. So we have a region where all that DNA is organized called the nucleoid region. It's not bound by a membrane, so that's not a nucleus, right? Outside of that, you can see in this electron micrograph, there's all these little black spots. Those are ribosomes that are used to take the mRNA and turn it into protein. So bacterial DNA, it's not just completely floating around in chaos, um, but it is organized. Now, this is going to be important because when we talk about processes called transcription and translation, making RNA and making protein, in eukaryotes, it's a bit slower because we have the nucleus, the DNA is in there, RNA gets made, but then it's got to go outside the nucleus to become protein. In bacteria... All of this can happen at once. So bacteria, remember, are super fast at living and reproducing. When bacteria reproduce, we call this process binary fission. Binary meaning two and fission meaning splitting. This basically starts with one cell, which divides into two equal copies or daughter cells. You could call this a form of clonal reproduction because they are identical to the original cell. Let's look at the process here. Okay, we have our cell, our parental cell. The first thing that needs to occur is DNA replication, right? If you have one cell and you want to make two cells, you need a copy of everything. In this case, the genome gets replicated. The DNA gets replicated here. Then we have what's called uh, segregation, where the two parts, the DNA and all the other bits, get segregated into the two different parts. And we have this process called septation that starts to occur, where a septum or a break or cleave starts to form in between the two daughter cells, as we call them. And when this process is done, we have it split into two identical daughter cells. So they are exact copies of the original cell, but now there's two of them. 
This process of septation leads to some interesting things. So again, the steps are DNA replication. Uh, we make a bunch of proteins and start to expand the cytoplasm. And then septation occurs. This divides the cell and the cell wall. Um, it starts to pinch in here. You can see this is for a circular or caucus-shaped bacteria. The way that this septation happens can lead to how different uh, bacteria chain or arrange themselves. We will learn this whole process in a later chapter, but if we look at the diagram here, here's the circular chromosome. It gets replicated. We end up with two copies, and then they each one goes into one of these daughter cells here. Let's watch an animation of cell division. Cell division requires highly coordinated growth and expansion of all the cell's parts. Most bacteria have a circular chromosome that begins to replicate at its origin. At the origin, the DNA double helix begins to unzip, forming two replication forks. At each replication fork, DNA is synthesized by DNA polymerase molecules, which replicate the original DNA molecule, forming two copies. Replication proceeds in both directions around the circle. In a rod-shaped cell, the cell envelope and cell wall must elongate as well to maintain progeny of even girth and length. Growing bacteria replicate their DNA continuously with no resting phase. Sometimes even before replication terminates, two new replication forks form at each new origin of replication. Replication of the DNA termination site triggers growth of the dividing partition of the envelope, called the septum. The septum grows inward from the sides of the cell at last constricting and sealing off the two daughter cells in a process called septation. Envelope extension and septation require rapid biosynthesis of all envelope components, including membranes and cell wall. Cocci, such as Staphylococcus aureus, do not elongate their cell walls before septation. Spherical cells expand their walls during septation. Here the furrows appear in the cell envelope all around the cell equator as a new cell wall grows inward. Two new envelope partitions are complete. The two daughter cells peel apart. The facing halves of each cell contain entirely new cell wall. Okay, so we saw rod-shaped bacteria dividing. We also saw caucus-shaped bacteria di uh, dividing. And here's an example of a caucus-shaped bacteria that kind of has divided into clumps. Because of the way it divides, it gets this pattern to it, which ends up looking like what we call a bunch of grapes. And the Greek term for a bunch of grapes is staphyle. So this is Staphylococcus aureus, and in many cases, you've probably heard of methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. Um, this is a common hospital-acquired infection. Uh, because it's antibiotic-resistant, it's very difficult to treat. You can recognize it by the cocci shaped and the way it uh, septates alternating to create these clusters. This is how they identify it under a microscope. In the case of MRSA, treatment requires long courses of several different antibiotics, uh, one of which inhibits protein synthesis, so it helps stop it from dividing. But um, this resistance to common antibiotics like methicillin makes it more difficult to treat. Okay, short but sweet. Uh, the nucleoid, not the nucleus, contains the loops of DNA, that single chromosome that bacteria have. The DNA is transcribed into RNA right there in the cytoplasm because there's no nucleus, and that mRNA gets turned into protein by ribosomes at the same time. This allows bacteria to replicate really quickly. We'll talk about this later, but DNA is replicated by this enzyme called DNA polymerase, which we'll talk a lot about in the DNA chapter because we're going to use this enzyme to do PCR, polymerase chain reaction, to replicate DNA in a test tube. We'll do that in the lab, which is pretty sweet. Cell expansion, the way it expands and the way it separates, uh, that has to be organized, right? That can't occur until DNA replication has happened. Rod-shaped cells will elongate the wall and then septate, whereas spherical ones kind of expand the wall. And the way that things divide and end up in different like chains or groups can help us identify them. We'll see that in the lab. Okay, that's it for 5.4.